Hello, and welcome to the Scholarly Communications video series from the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. My name is Randy Plim, and I'm a senior library assistant at the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. Today, we're going to be briefly talking about altmetrics considerations. Let's get started. So in your academic career, you've probably heard the term altmetrics, or maybe you've seen the little donut on the side of some journal articles. That looks like that. It's conspicuous, it's well-designed, it tracks what we're primarily talking about today, which is altmetrics. But I also want to situate altmetrics in traditional metrics, since altmetrics rose to meet the deficiencies of traditional metrics. Um, both of them, it's important to say, are filters, filters for importance. That's the definition given by the altmetrics manifesto, which is linked at the bottom of this PowerPoint, but also filters for attention, especially in this age of increasing scholarship it's, it's anything that helps you narrow the field and limit paralysis of choice it is really useful as a researcher and a writer. So we're going to talk about these more in depth in coming slides, but for now, traditional metrics, they include things like citation count, something called an H index, the impact factor of a journal, uh, p whether the article has been peer reviewed, whereas all metrics you can see arose in the digital age and include things like article views, downloads, bookmarks, reviews, social media mentions, and Wikipedia references. Traditional metrics are, of course, useful. However, since this is a PowerPoint about alt metrics, we're mostly going to talk about the deficiencies of traditional metrics. You might not have recognized the items on the list previously, um, however, they're basically all citation dependent, which is the most quantifiable aspect of traditional scholarship. Um, for example, the citation count, of course, but the H index, which we have a great uh, tutorial about in our video library, that's an author level index. It's a way of measuring the entire output of someone's career, but it uses citations as a major part of its formula. The same thing with impact factor, which tries to look at the prestige of any given journal, but that also uses citations as a major part of its formula. So when you have one thing majorly informing your measurement, blind spots are inevitable. Uh, so for example, citations can take a long time to accumulate. This could overlook up and coming scholars. Uh, if the first citation can take years. It does not track readership. So the less quantifiable elements, if you're making an impact on people's minds, but uh, it's not something that they ever write about or cite, then um, that's just completely not measured. Um, and, if, and it also doesn't track impact outside the academic world. So artists and journalists and other um, academic, academic adjacent people or just non-academics entirely, it doesn't say whether your work is being grasped or used by these types of people. Um, and of course, citations can snowball. What gets cited gets cited more, and important works can therefore be overlooked. All of these deficiencies inform the original ideological basis for the accumulation of alt metrics. So, for example, if we had clicked on the donut, we would see a drop down like this. We see that the colors correlate to different mediums like news outlets and blogs. And by looking at this list, we see how it helps to fill the gaps left by traditional metrics. It accounts for readership. These things accumulate very quickly. Readership can accumulate within hours. And it shows us non-academic interest. There's YouTube reflected in this list as well as Reddit, um, Facebook, other social medias. And of course, these things might not be completely divergent. There could be academic institutions reflected on social media or academic YouTube channels. The cool thing is, the all metrics also gives us a much larger overview of how things are used. So if we click on this link, it will take us to an example page where it shows the, all the different headlines aggregated into one place. We can sort of see the tenor of the outlines of how something is used, as well as whether something is being talked about in reputable places. Um, we can sort of imagine going back to the main slide as readers, writers, and as published authors, how this aggregation can be extremely useful for us. It can let us know whether a piece of information we're trying to use in our writing is, is reputable. Uh, it can also let us know what sort of outlets potentially um, have published things that, with high impact. And if we're the published author, we can track the way our stuff is being used and also, if we're applying for something like a fellowship or a grant or another academic position, 
this sort of quantified information can be very useful in bolstering our applications. Of course, altmetrics have their own set of limitations, some of which parallel and some mirror that of traditional metrics. For example, it's worth saying that attention does not equal value, just the way that citation count can snowball and what gets cited gets cited more. What gets attention can get more attention, and important works can be left un underassessed. It's also worth saying that trendiness factors heavily into attention. That article that I've been featuring has been about psilocybin, aka magic mushrooms. It's not really hard to see why this kind of thing would get a lot more attention on Reddit and YouTube and, frankly, news outlets than something like an article about deep vein thrombosis. And of course, negative attention is still attention. A panned article might have a lot of attention, maybe significantly more than a non-panned article. It would be up to the researcher to differentiate how an article has been used and not just the fact that it's been read a lot. Um, of course, it's been argued that altmetrics are more susceptible to manipulation than traditional metrics. We can imagine how something like page count or page views would be a lot easier to manipulate than citation count. And altmetrics has the opposite problem age-wise as traditional metrics. Altmetrics started to accumulate in 2011, so some really old articles might not have any information at all. And altmetrics really works best on pages that have a DOI. So some pages might not even have altmetrics. But limitations aside, altmetrics are still a great resource for your academic career. So the question naturally arises of where to find them. If you're on PubMed or CINAHL or one of the other databases, some, some articles have that altmetric donut automatically in the toolbar, especially for open access journals. But this isn't really the most reliable way of seeing this information though. Uh, Scopus, which we'll talk about on the next and last slide, is a great resource. Um, for now, I wanna mention the altmetric bookmarklet, which you can download for free. There's, this is also linked at the bottom of the PowerPoint. Basically, once you have that bookmark on your page, which I have a little snap here of if you're on a page that has a DOI you just click on that and it gives you that altmetric drop down which we saw in a couple pages ago this is a, this is a fantastic resource to see that sort of information about a wide range of articles and so i want to end with scopus i think scopus is a great place to end because as a database it aggregates both traditional and altmetrics in one place so if we clicked on an article like i did here at the bottom, we would see citation count, which of course is a traditional metric, field weighted citation impact, which is a hybrid metric looking at the, the impact of any given article compared to its peers, view count, which is an all metric. And then if we clicked on view all metrics here, they have PlumX, which is sort of a variant of the alt metrics donut, which size and color codes different media representations of where any research has appeared. Um, making Scopus overall a fantastic resource for looking and measuring the impact of any given piece of research. I hope this gives you ideas on how to improve your own research. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Altmetrics Considerations. If you enjoy this tutorial, please visit our video library where you can also, where you can also find the associated slides. If you have any questions about the material covered in this session or have questions specific to your own research, don't hesitate to contact me at randyplim at gwu.edu. And on behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you so much for listening.